Hi, welcome to the Divine Medium presents Spirit Talk Live. Um, today, I want to talk about the Hall of Knowledge. It is a place in heaven. I know everyone wanted to get uh, the Angel of the Week, the Crystal of the Week, but I feel like we're not going to have enough time to do all that. So let's just get right into it. If you are looking to um, get sessions, get crystals, get anything to help with um, your life, you would go to thedivinemedium.com for any of that stuff or the crystalcovespa.com for your crystal needs. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, the Hall of Knowledge, it is a different plane of existence. Um, it's a different vibration from Earth. There is a connection to Earth, um, which they call aka Terra, in the sense that we learn of what we have to get done. Um, it's like a big hall or banquet. Um, it has these big white pillars. Um, it kind of bends in at the top, just like the Book of Knowledge uh, area where you gain most of your um, insight to different places and realms, okay? The School of Knowledge or the Hall of Knowledge is more to kind of review your lives. The Book of Knowledge area um, is mainly kind of getting insight to other places. Um, the uh, It's not bright like the sun. It's more like warm and sunny. Um, and it shines from within and without, if that makes sense to you. <laughs> um, so it's mainly it shines from wherever and everywhere, okay? The hall is tall, has marble pillars, like I said before, and emits a white radiance. If you um, if you come to the hall of uh, to the hall of knowledge, you're going to um, go down what's kind of like a corridor or a hallway, and this goes towards the classrooms or the lecture areas, and you perceive anything you want to in this area, in this hallway area, meaning you can see anything that you would like to see. If you visualize it, it's just suddenly going to appear. Um, so however, if you make an experience good or bad, so in the sense of bad, if you were dealing with guilt, you're going, or forgiveness, you're going to create this um, kind of soul suffering in this area so that you can review this, um, this emotion. Um, and this isn't to be reviewed in a bad way, but more of a calming, peaceful um, perception of what you just dealt with. It's, it's basically the Hall of Knowledge is a transition area between the realm you just came from to the plane of existence that you're about to go into, okay? I have all my notes here so I don't lose my thoughts. <laughs> um, you are the one learning in this, in this area, and in turn, you make the surrounding environment look however you want it to. Um, every plane of existence is essential on a higher plane of Earth, so the topography or the, um, the surrounding area around you is going to be very similar to, to the energy of Earth. Um, the energy is a lot thicker here. Um, there is still hills and mountains and valleys and water, but not so much in the positioning um, sense that it would be on Earth. The colors are much more intense and vibrant. Um, they're more pure in nature. You can have personal buildings of your own, but the energy behind this kind of construction um, blueprint behind these buildings is more influenced by giving a certain imagery um, leeway, uh, again, with your perception. Mainly, it's Earth at a different plane. Uh, everyone sees, but it's at a much different energy level. So just like the laws that control gravity on Earth, the laws that govern the energy here in, in this um, area are different than Earth. Okay, So the animals are real, the trees are real, everything's real, the ground is even solid. However, the constructs of this plane can be very, very um done effectively different. It's here all the time to help make the soul comfortable and at peace, but it's just a matter of personal perception as to whether or not you perceive it that way. When I speak of this, I'm speaking of souls on the plane of karmatic cycling or a soul's mantling. They don't really call it karma, karmatic or karma. They call it more spirit mantling, soul mantling, aka incarnation. These souls would not perceive it because they are at the, a lower plane of perception and perceive imagery at that level. Um, thank you. I'm sorry, guys. 
most souls would call this plane um, to heaven, but rather refer it to as a soul's paradise. So there's a difference between a soul's paradise and heaven. Okay, a paradise in the sense of a perfected earth plane, earthly without destruction and decay. Heaven, on the other hand, ref- um, refers to the higher plane of um, learned knowledge. This place is the existence that a soul or spirit knows of instinctively, um, kind of like a a baby deer instinctively learns to go to their mother deer um, for milk or food. Heaven is where everything is energy. Paradise is where lower planes of learning still are similar to earth, um, but just at a higher plane of earth. This goes for other alien races as well. So if you come from that plane of existence, you can receive that plane of existence to continue learning from that plane of existence. Um, this, uh, they will see similars, uh, similarities in their worlds on this plane of existence. And sorry, guys, we we have some background noise. <laughs> okay, heaven is energy manipulated. Um, when a soul passes or crosses over into paradise, everything must have its order. Things must be perceived and comprehended before your soul is prepared to transition and see the higher levels so that your consciousness can understand it more fairly. In heaven, there are no earthly sea, seen, um, sceneries, but rather your perception is different there. You see energies kind of like um, the popular uh, energy light display of an uh, aura borealis. Um, you are energy, and in turn, you can manipulate energy to achieve or um, cause different situations or things to happen. Okay. When you are in the higher planes, you are given access into the lower planes to see what's going on. So you can tap into those lower planes to kind of learn from them. There is no constricting uh, viewpoint. Uh, to these areas, but rather what level you desire to see. There are no surroundings in heaven because there are no horizons to kind of pull back these boundaries. Paradise is the transition area for the soul to adjust to the fact it is no longer on the earth plane. It needs time to understand it, has freedom to move around into different planes to a soul that has access to based, um, has access based off the soul's learning and advancements. You can be in a classroom or a lecture place, which is where you would come for me. I'm one of the teachers. Many souls um, come there. Could be other souls that can't, sorry. You can be in a classroom or lecture with many souls. And there could be other souls there that you don't see who may be working on their soul issues. They have different lessons to review um, or learn and eventually need to come to terms with that learning. A soul must not limit themselves to worldly influences, for these are the issues most souls struggle with in the lectures. You do not learn alone. Your guides are always with you. Your counsels are always there to help you um, when needed. When asked a question, the answer is immediately given. There's no wait time because everything is telepathically given, and it's there to be absorbed at all times. I get asked if we have bodies, we just got asked that um, earlier on the Facebook page. Um, not in the sense that you would expect it. It's more energy based with a body outline. You can visualize things like a robe or clothing um, that may be worn that comes across more um, like a transparent white uh liquidy feel. Um, A soul can look more solid if they choose to, um, but you don't have to. It's more energy based and whatever type of visual clothing pleases them is what's going to be seen. Again, this is a projection of an image that at that specific time, that soul is feeling that kind of energy about themselves. Um, And no, no one looks alike. It depends on what the soul wants to achieve. A soul can um, be ever changing their look from time to time, but for the meantime, a soul mainly chooses uh, one imagery to kind of base themselves off of. Um, Some classes you can take are like things like life experiences. In this class, you would take all of your lives experiences and compile them together in one to kind of make sense of what you've desired out of your learning and what the outcome was to be and how each situation may have affected you or how each situation you handled it with your actions or words. Um, And what the biggest thing is, what did you learn? Um, Is it 
very peaceful in this class, yes, which gives the soul their mindful solitude. You want to be very mindful in this kind of teaching area, okay? Here on earth, we adjust our own judgments to fit our lives. We usually do this to make our um, actions justified. But in the class, you can analyze these actions and go through each situation again and again and again to help gain a more truthful perspective of what really happened to you, um, what really happened around you. Um, I'm going to kind of put out that, you know, when I was in heaven, I the best way I can describe the area I was in was there's this fabric of life um, and it's very dark in front of me, very light behind me and, and both ends of the spectrum meshed together and just made sense. Again, not a horizon, but a meshing um, where the light can seep through at any point in time. And there was stars be in front of me and there was more and more each time I um, kind of per put my perception from one side to the next side. Um, and it, you know, it, again, when you ask a question it immediately comes to you and you are uh, you don't wait for an answer. The answer comes immediately. And the stars, I automatically knew were souls. And it doesn't matter if the fabric was ripped or torn. It wouldn't be torn or broken. It was alive and it stayed meshed and it stayed together. And that was um, that was the the souls coming together and showing that they were learning together, no matter what level they were on. So you could have big stars, medium stars, little stars, but they all shone at the same level of brightness, meaning they are all learning together, no matter what level they're on. Um, okay, let's see. We do this so as to not repeat previous dysfunctional learnings. We, we go to these areas because of this. Um, we we don't want to make errors in our learning. We want to grow. We don't want to go backwards. You can learn many lessons on how to deal with human problems, which then help to make better decisions. Um, this way, the soul expands in their advancement and their horizons in their own learning. In your soul's contracts, you will go over decisions you will make, the work that will be handled, and the problems that will be dealt with. So everything in your soul contract is coming Together, you, everything you want to learn is in that soul contract. Um, you choose the learning situations, how you decide, and then how to handle yourself as well as others you have to have relationships with. Um, when you go through things on earth, the most important thing is your attitude, the way you handle it all. The biggest regret in lives um, during this self, uh, this self pre, um, perception of how you're learning is to not be self-deceptive. Don't. Don't self you know, don't self destruct yourself. Um, the biggest uh, the biggest thing is is fear as well. You don't want this to control you. People can't be honest. They can't make excuses for why they do things, and then in the end justify it with twists and turns with untruth. Okay, so always just be truthful to yourself and admit that um, yes, I'm afraid, but how can I fix that? Okay. One soul can learn in the class. Um, how to speak up for themselves. So this could be, and this kind of reminded me of somebody close to me that I know. <laughs> um, uh, the soul can learn how to you know, stand up for themselves, how to be strong and not allow others to manipulate themselves. And I, and I myself am learning this as we um, be, grow popular. Um, as I grow popular, I'm starting to realize that I have to take back control of what I'm supposed to be learning. And somebody can't just randomly take that from me. Um, your spirit knows the main things you need to learn, and then it creates situations without your physical um, really even being aware of it. it. It kind of just plays it out as it's supposed to. But all in all, all this, all these things happen for a reason. On Earth, you want to be aware. You'll think it's um, it's all just happening by chance, but really, all has been uh, thought out and planned. Um, for a purpose upon your soul's learning here. So you, a, a good portion of what you're learning you aren't even aware was already planned out as it's going. Um, when does a soul decide to return and do they have to? Um, I get this asked a lot. Uh, no, a soul uh, doesn't have to return if it doesn't feel appropriate to. You can stay in heaven or paradise and learn, but there are no real uh, 
rules that say you uh, have to mantle back through or not. Um, it's when a soul seeks challenge or rather upon peace that they decide these things um, come into play where they want to learn. So if you want to challenge your soul, you're going to end up coming back here. Um, if not, you'd rather just stay in peace than you stay in heaven or paradise. When a soul chooses another soul, you can fill or fit that soul's needs. Then you get involved with them um, on the other side. You build emotions and bonds, and their lives are eventually affected by you and vice versa. Everything, again, must be planned out ahead um, so that many souls who wish to travel to Earth um, are not uh, bombarded by uh, vessels. And I know this is weird to say, but there's not enough bodies for every soul to come here. So your planning and your learning is a very strategic and very important. Um, vessels uh, that are being returned are immediately used again. Okay, I know it's a little weird, but this is how this works. Teachers in heaven, like myself, Help souls make the bigger decisions, okay? Your little decisions are made by you, but the bigger, bigger decisions are helped along with your um, masters and your teachers. Um, your soul makes the lesser ones. A soul contract is too complicated to figure out on your own. A soul will also sometimes make it too easy on themselves and not give themselves enough issues in life to which they wouldn't grow in their own learning on here on earth. So... Wasting earth time is not an option. You do not want to do that, okay? Your physical earth characteristics are the total sum of everything you have ever done, ever been. Each soul has a personality, and the personality is what makes everything continue to be learned, okay? Um, it's your free will that's intact in which you choose what you choose um, because you are that person. The personality is very predictable. So everybody around you all is going to know what you're going to choose, what you're going to decide based off that personality. It's just, this is your MO. This is your personality. However, a soul can change situations just by changing or going against the character. But it is unusual for a soul to change in this way. So dramatically and quickly. You make your own decisions. But, however, if a soul does change in this way, it's most likely a walk-in, and we're going to talk more on that in the next uh, radio show, uh, the next episode, which would be next week. You make your own decisions, that, and you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't want to possibly learn, so you want to make your decisions based off things that you would most likely wouldn't want to learn, but um, you probably should. You must handle your own mistakes quote unquote mistakes or what you perceive as mistakes in your own learning. You have a choice in matters and those that choose to not worry about matters in order to make change are simply just becoming lazy about those matters and not wanting to grow. Um, so things like um, animal abuse or things that are going on with politics. Um, if you're just sitting back and not helping the cause, then you're not really, you know, getting involved in your, in your learning. When you go into a physical body, you don't remember things of the previous, but this is to an extent. There are always ways of tapping into the consciousness to remember it. just takes time to study and learn how to do this. Practice, practice. Karma is to be learned till it is overcome. For example, if you kill someone, um, maybe over jealousy or over money, you must come to that same situation again to overcome it, or, and oftentimes that is not its uh, it's not turned around and you might be killed. So long story short, if you kill somebody, you can come back and end up being killed um, over the same exact thing. And this is how this karmatic uh, wheel or the mantling uh, happens where uh, a soul learns from this karmatic path of understanding through love. And this is to help people love better. Um, you may have to leave a very amazing life if you did this, if you killed somebody over cheating or jealousy or money, you may plan out an amazing life. Everything's perfect. And all of a sudden, bam, you're yanked from that life. And it was short lived. This is so in order to experience the loss of something pleasant and good, it all comes back around in order to be learned. You can also pay it back. So to speak, where you need a person of great injustice and have to come back and serve them in another life. So if you do something bad to somebody, you can actually come back and have to 
serve them in some way or protect them in some way. This is uh, called a dedication of a soul life. You're dedicating your one of your lives to them out of um, respect and love for what you did. Earth is not the only realm of consciousness. There are old souls, there are young souls. All souls have been around for the same degree of time. However, same some souls have chosen to mantle through or incarnate through more than others, which makes them more older or wiser in their learning of earthly experiences or other planes of existence. So why learn from the physical? It's very important to learn this way, but you but you cannot change yourself without experiencing a reason to change. So it's like reading a book. Um, you're, uh, you're absorbing the words and kind of creating this um, story for yourself. But if the, but if you don't use the knowledge, it is not worth, uh, it's not worth it. It's not true in its worthiness. It's not felt in great depth. So you have to come into the physical to learn from the consciousness, uh, that you came from. Um, so it's basically reading the book and you get kind of like this story, but it's not until you get into the story that you actually uh, understand the, le life, the life lessons learned. Um, it is very hard to learn lessons, very hard, but if you can learn the lessons before you, before you, um, uh, before you understand the struggles and the tough times, you will remain with you, those will make, remain with you for a, a lasting time. Um, so basically, long story short, what I'm trying to get at <laughs> is um, you have to learn from struggles and tough times because they end up staying with you longer than something that would be super easy and, and peaceful to get through. I mean, if, you, if you're if you just wanting peace and lovey, cushy stuff, then you wouldn't leave heaven, <laughs> okay? Um, I am one of the guardians. Um, it's very... It's very big to be a guardian of records, the Akashic records, as some people call them. Um, but uh, it's actually called the Life Book, and it kind of looks like um, one of these books, but it's really, really big. Um, it's kind of like that. I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to big books like this, is because it's the Life Book that they keep trying to go back to because they keep wanting to look at their lives. Um, I'm one of the few allowed to read or access these. Not too many souls are allowed to access the Akashic records or the mantling soul contract records. Um, some who study and practice for a very long time have little access to them, um, but very few that I know of that are incarnate and have full access to those records. Um, it's very few and slim. Um, let me see. It has everyone's lives in it, so to speak. Everyone can refer to it when needed, but when you turn the pages, it will reflect what you are looking for and so forth for someone else, okay? It reflects upon the soul and what that soul seeks to obtain within its pages. What you seek, you want to find is there. So um, an analogy for this would be a mailing center. So there are individual mailing box that are stored, that stores your mailing center um, mailings, basically. Um, but the mailing center itself, building itself is the big storehouse. Each mailbox contains only that which is relevant to you. So you yourself are the mailbox of your own energy. So in turn, you may go to your particular box and withdraw information which you seek. However, the, bo the book or mailing center houses the pages with that particular information. Every experience is automatically put into the book to be looked upon for reference upon anyone at any time. So basically, if you're reviewing something in your one of your past lives or your life here, you're going to go to the soul contract book of life and review it. And sometimes when you get memories of your loved one, um, it's that loved one that's actually going to those records to review certain parts of their lives and you're getting downloaded with the memory that they're reviewing. So when that happens, you want to kind of step back and go, okay, what did we learn? <laughs> okay. Um, these can play out in the life review in order to be um, revealed later in real time. So again, going back to old memories that you may have had with a loved one. Um, if, for example, a particular experience was not was to be removed from records, this would be done only if it serves no purpose. For example, the burning of the Jews or burning of the witches. For those who experience those parts of life, 
was not intended to be an experience, but to be more of a problem and would cause issues in their other lives. So there's a karmatic or mantling protection put over these um, souls experiences that could be later erased. Um, their subconscious could not access such a tragedy for it would indeed cause problems in future lifetimes. These types of occurrences go through the healing process to um, nullify these experience, these traumatic experiences through healing energies. One can complete their um, mantling, their karmatic mantling in one full lifetime if they uh, choose to, um, and in turn live a more exemplary life. And that and that is the end of it. That that's the end of it. They just they put all their karmatic experiences as into one lifetime just to get it all done and then that's it they don't have to repeat those things um and i believe those souls really have a tough hard time um whereas some have to go on and on for many lifetimes to work out things um so we are going to learn a lot more about the hall of knowledge our time is almost up and if you guys continue to stay on the Divine Medium fan page and Christina K. Watts, C-A-Y, middle name, um, page, we are live on Facebook. I will be continuing to talk about this and um, answer questions that anyone has. Um, so you guys are welcome to join in uh, after the show. Um, but all, all of this knowledge with Hall of Knowledge, um, School of Knowledge, a study of knowledge in heaven, it is an amazing place. Um, you're free to learn anything you want to learn. You're not, um, you know, stuck to one course of action or learning. So you can continue to learn all these things. Um, and, and if there's certain things that are too traumatic, you can remove them. You're not stuck with them. Um, you can learn from them uh, in different ways. Um, so if you were one of those Jews that were um, in the, you know, in those traumatic times, you don't have to have those things sticking to your energy. Um, God will remove them because he knows how traumatic they are. And, and this is allowed. This is um, just an example of his love.